Hi, I'm Gil, developer of Back to the Streets. On last episode, I spoke about the 2014 prototype in Unity, concluding that it doesn't provide the stability that I'm aiming for. So I started a new deterministic engine. Determinism not only ensures that the game behaves consistently on every run, it makes network synchronization trivial. On a non-deterministic network game, the logics must run in a single machine and propagate it to all clients on every update. That's a client-server approach. A client action must first go through the server before its results being propagated to all clients. This back-and-forth messaging results in non-optimal latency. A deterministic network game allows every client to run the game logics and reach the same results, provided the same input. So clients just exchange input actions directly between each other, resulting in less latency, which is very important on fast-paced games such as beat em ups Now, the base architecture for every entity in the engine is simple. An entity can be a character, an object, anything that you can interact with. Every entity is divided into a model, a view and a controller. The model containing all entities' information, such as character position and health. This component has nothing but data and is serializable, meaning it can be stored in a file or sent through the network. The view simply displays the information contained on the model. For example, it can draw a sprite at the character's position. And the controller do all the logics for that entity, modifying the information present on the model on every frame. Raw input is first translated into actions, allowing for different input devices to produce the same player actions. Player's actions are then used by the controller. For example, if attack is pressed, the controller changed character stance to attack. Player's actions are also serializable and exchanged through the network, so the controllers on every client have access to all players' input actions as if they were playing locally. Because of latency, actions coming from the network can refer to a past moment. It may be necessary to go back in time apply the action and redo the state until present. For example, a character is idle until at frame 7 the player presses attack. Time continues and on frame 8 the character returns to idle state. Meanwhile, from the network arrives a jump action that took place at frame 4. Everything from 4 to 8 is erased and redone with the new action. So, character jumps at frame 4, time goes until frame 7, in which the attack action took place. That results in the character doing an air kick. That's our new present state. This may not look so good visually. The player see a punch and right after it switches to a the jump kick. Actually, the view interplays the two states, smoothing the experience. But to reduce the rollback effect even more, delay is applied on player's input. A good balance between the two is key for a better experience. There are other strategies here. If a client gets delayed for some reason, his game runs slightly faster to catch up the others. Having a solid netplay, I coded some deterministic 3D physics engine and then a deterministic behavior composition system which allows to easily add new behavior to a character, similar to Unity components. That's the base of my later character editor, which I'll talk about on a future devlog. With all this implemented, I did this first prototype, a multiplayer side-scrolling shooter. All the assets used are free assets found at the Unity Asset Store, all the content linked in the description. The video shows two players, but it was up to six. Next I did a top-down tanks prototype to demonstrate that the network engine is not tied to a specific kind of game. The video shows a single player, but it was prepared to up to eight players.
It was a nice experiment playing more with the environment here. On hosting a game, one could select a map from a list of maps and pick up some game settings, such as a tank's energy, how many bullets to fire at once, and if they bounce off the walls. Finally, the last prototype before starting with a real beat-em-up engine. Snow Blazers, a downhill ski racing game up to 6 players. This was done during a hackathon at Miniclip, which is where I worked for 4 years. You can play Snow Blazers at the Miniclip website and compete with players from all over the world. That was the ultimate test to the network engine before proceeding with a pity map. And here is a little demo of my latest work. Beat em up style with netplay. I'm going to talk more about this on the next devlog, perhaps even provide a link to a playable demo, so stay tuned. If you have comments, ideas, or if you want to contribute somehow to the project, don't hesitate on sending me a message. Help moving BTTS forward.